This week we read Mating with Mallows, an erotic sentient candy romance by Nora Noodle. It's about peeps, guys. Peeps. Cecilia Reynolds has hated sweets ever since she was a child, particularly those of the pastel Easter candy variety. This earns her teasing from friends and colleagues due to the passionate nature of her vehemence. But can one chance encounter with sentient marshmallow rabbit hunks change her mind about this aversion forever? Spoiler alert. Yes. <laughs> I didn't know they made chick peeps. They make all kinds of peeps. I used to see only the chick peeps for the longest time. I didn't see the bunny ones forever. So today we decided that while we typically do the unhinged shit and just bring Angie in for other things, we decided to share the joy. Spread the peep love. <laughs> and even though Ariel chose the book, it is still, I don't even know if it's a novella. <laughs> this shit is 21 pages long. It's still me. We were it's- like. Hey, Angie, you want to read the most unhinged thing we've seen? And it's only 20 pages. I honestly feel like like that (laughs) this is one of the more unhinged reads that we've read so far. Yeah, this bitch was unhinged. This book is crazy. 21 pages of wild marshmallowy goodness. Okay. Yeah. So we read Mating with Mallows by Nora Noodle. Listen. We've brought you into the fold and here we are. So I'm okay with that. This book starts off in an office where Cece's friend, we learned Cece is the main character. How do we know this? We just learn it. Her friend Miranda, who's also like her coworker too, is asking her to try one of the glittering bonbon marshmallow things. It's a peep. They probably can't call it a peep in the book. And that's probably because why. Of copyright, yeah. yeah. But it seems it, legit. It, it's a peep. Cece hates sugar. She I personally fuck. wouldn't want to bet 21 pages on using the word peep either. Like that's, a, that's, that's a betting game. <laughs> yeah. She doesn't want it. And this time of year, fucking backstory takes me out, by the way, always reminds her of when her dad walked out on her. So that's fun. That's That's a fun. That's a fun time. And when she looks at these containers of treats she just feels their evil little presence and their little beady eyes and as she is deep in thought she gets one hooked at her by like her other two co-workers and they are just all claiming to be teasing her which like why the fuck won't you just leave, leave it alone if she says hey i don't want this please blah 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 just leave it the fuck be instead of being like oh it's just funny we're having fun now there's trauma It's a weird thing to have a hang up about, which is probably why they did that. (laughs) Yeah. So we learn that the reason she doesn't like sugar is because she had used it as a distraction as a kid and went down one day into the kitchen or whatever the fuck to just grab these delicious little treats. And then she just heard her mother wailing. And then ever since then, I'm assuming it's when her dad left is why she heard the wailing. And ever since then, she hasn't liked it. So cool. You're telling me that this little girl around this time of year six, mind you, was sneaking into the treat cabinet and had just scored a package of peeps when she heard a noise. It was her mother on the phone. Oh, okay. She might be caught. She needs to quickly grab her peeps. Oh, no. Her mother starts fucking wailing at the top of her lungs. And it's the most horrific noise she has ever heard in her entire life. And she looks at these peeps and they are now the worst thing she has ever seen in the world. Now that she's heard her mother wailing this sound. And you mean to tell me that her mother made this horrific sound, this wail, because the father called to let the mother know that he was leaving her like i'm sorry bring 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 hello hi honey i'm sorry i won't be home for dinner i'm or ever with susan i i won't be home ever well that does not seem legit yeah at that point 
like I wouldn't have cried. I'd probably I probably would have let out a couple the of curse like, words. Do, is that like, really the the reaction to that? I'm leaving you for Susan. It's trauma. Whale. It's trauma. Whale. But anyway, this entire backstory is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. They were in my just trying to put life. depth in a 21 page book, okay? But I the depth it. is so ridiculous. <laughs> and the hey, book man. wasn't. <laughs> Sometimes like life is ridiculous that way. What are you gonna I'm just, do? I'm if just some saying, Ariel, thirty-year-old bitch came to me and told me she couldn't look at these because she heard her mother wail one day and she was stuffing them in her face. It, I don't know. It's a book just about saying. nailing peeps. I don't know where you I wanted think, this to go. I think that the author was trying to make like a negative association like that using the property of transference or whatnot it it would have made more sense this is what happened it it, it would have made more sense if my father left on easter they got into a big fight and i just stood there holding the peeps over the easter basket and my father just walked out the door not my mother wailing over the telephone angie i'm just gonna let you know that i'm done now ario really (laughs) tries to find the depth oh, in the unhinged wrong. books that we mm-hmm. read i get it it's just about fucking it sometimes that's how it goes anyways so after this interaction with her co-workers she starts having night sweats again because apparently trauma <laughs> she thinks that she should Those really sugary peeps i know she should really talk to miranda you know like an adult but nah so she also thinks about calling the mental health center. Also a really, really good idea, but she just didn't have the energy. <laughs> so we see her at the supermarket and she decides to just pick up a variety pack of these suckers after avoiding them. But, you know, it's fine. She puts them in her cart like a weirdo. Like if she can't see them, they're not really there. because She's like hiding them underneath everything because that, you know. Hashtag avoidance. Yeah. She's so, going to do some immersive therapy. Later that night, to... <laughs> later that night, she decides to sit in front of a mirror and decides to watch herself open the package and have a little talk with herself. Ari- and this is the point where I wrote, Ariel, what the fuck book did you get us into? <laughs> this uh... part. I just was like, she's sitting and talking to herself. This is so, I understand. The so she can pep talk herself to eat these peeps. Okay. So like, when I was, I was making my phone read this to me as I was cleaning my house. Cause I was like, there's no way I'm going to sit here and actually look at these ridiculous fucking words. Like after the first chapter, I was like, ain't no fucking way. I need to do something with my hands because otherwise it's not going to happen. So I'm listening to this and I didn't actually hear her sit down in front of a mirror or anything. I heard her like, she got home she's in and front she of a mirror put all this stuff on the, on the counter and then she decided that she was going to try it the way that her co-workers suggested it which was to pop but then she the caught the mirror on bit. the way and looked at her yeah, she had, like, a pop the mirror sorry she had a she pep t- like, it it doesn't even matter no she pep it talks herself, i was letting you go stupid. because whatever <laughs> so she decides yes because you know her co-workers had mentioned about that they taste really good but if you warm them up in the microwave I wouldn't know. I fucking hate peeps. They're disgusting. It's like warming up any marshmallow. They're just marshmallows. I don't need a lot of marshmallows. Like I throw them the on top of my hot cocoa and that's it. I also really like the dehydrated marshmallows, like the Lucky Charms. I will just eat those like a motherfucker. I just want a whole container of them. Uh, I used to see them in the grocery store. You could buy the like container. Anyways. I wonder if you could get it on Amazon. You might be able to. Just a container of charms from Lucky Charms, but no... My parents used to get really pissed at me because I would eat out all of the marshmallows from the Lucky Charms and just leave the rest of the cereal. I like yeah, the actual like, just I know cereal part. I know. So we, we can share a box. You See, this is why we other. could have been married. Remember, mm-hmm. we discussed this. I bake yep. really well. You cook really well. I eat all the marshmallows. You eat all the cereal. I eat the cereal. There's a lot of things here. They're sweetened and I the marshmallows are too much. Anyways, so she decides, you know what? I'm going to put two in the microwave because, you know, they have to have a buddy. She warms them up like her friend suggested. And when the timer goes off, boom, an explosion happens because why not? That is and- the part where I thought was really funny because she's like, did I just blow up my fucking kitchen <laughs> trying to get over this stupid but guess trauma? What? Two marshmallow bunny men have appeared. 
over six foot tall. No way. Totally ripped. Who knew where this was going? <laughs> they start just like flirting with her. There's a blue one and a pink one. And they oh, tell her. Apparently they've been watching her forever. Yeah, they're straight up berating her. They're like, how dare you not like put us in your yeah. mouth for yeah. years? Yeah, they tell her that they've been waiting for her to free them from the packaging and they call her a naughty girl. And she checks them out a little bit and focuses on their giant cock. <laughs> so, of course. I want to know about the other two, though. She only put two well, in the microwave. I know. She, she just left the two. other two in the package. I she mean, said that she, towards the end, she was At like, the end? I know. Yeah. I know. We're mi- I know. We're missing out. Well, probably. Well, is there another book? Because then there you go. No, I looked. <laughs> of course you looked. <laughs> of course so. She's probably, you know what? She probably does it every year. So she's got to have them. So, so yeah. So Super she focuses material. on the giant cock. And man, do those cocks make her mouth water. And they ask her what they're going to do. I mean, with- they are sugary marshmallow. That is true. They ask what they're, you know, going to do with her. She asks the very big question of who the fuck they are. Because, duh. And they say that they miss her. And that she's always passed by them. But never, you know, never giving them a fair chance until today. And they miss the feel of her lips and the flick of her tongue. <laughs> it's so weird. Ew. Taste of your lips on the sugar cock. This is the second episode that you've sung Toxic in lately. The blue one starts to massage her while the pink one puts his fingers in her mouth. And then the pink one kisses her and he tastes like vanilla and sugar because he's a peep. Duh. Mm-hmm. And then he like tugs her hair and she is super turned on and it, it seems like they know what to do. Calling it choreographed. <laughs> a choreographed choreographed dance of sugar plum dicks very <laughs> massive very massive oh god <laughs> so the blue one tells her to kneel and they call her a good girl and they ask Ooh. if she's been with two before and she just said once you know in college <laughs> and they say well buckle up sweetheart there are no normal men and i just said no fucking shit <laughs> giant funny men i just i <laughs> like from in oratory standpoint sure that might be interesting because you know it's basically eating marshmallows from a below the belt perspective i don't know is it i don't know i just i'm so confused and a little bit grossed out a little bit because if you think about how much your ph is thrown off by just regular clothes imagine shoving marshmallows up in there good grief i just I Angie could. is very worried about this fictional woman's vagina health. I mean, you were worried about this. I mean, somebody has story, to be. So She's clearly not. Oh God! So <laughs> she should see several different kinds of doctors. Oh God! There so was no the... latex protection. They were oh, just God. raw dogging. No, well, so raw, raw mellowing not... it. I don't know. So the blue one puts his candy cock in her mouth, and the pink one starts going into her vagina, and she has never been so full of marshmallow in her. And yeah. then. And she feels like this is just the beginning. So we have a spit roast going on, which is interesting because they're marshmallows, so they should be roasting. But that's a whole thing besides the point. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag <laughs> Eiffel Tower. <laughs> I thought it was funny. I was like, spit roasting. Wait, they're marshmallows. <laughs> Where's the fire? Well, they um, should be the ones on the there, spit. <laughs> there is some questionable verbiage like sugary schlong, whatever. <clears throat> then she just- love the noodles- love for alliteration yes then she licks the blue one like a lollipop but no sucker could ever compare it to the life she felt pouring through this marshmallow man she doesn't know you know how she survived all adulthood without this attention from these men and she starts considering doing this with them more in the future and actually she craves it and when the blue one comes it's a bunch of marshmallow fluff going down her throat i hope you didn't like marshmallow fluff and if you did you're welcome after they're all done. I feel like she would choke. Probably. That shit's thick. After they're Again, done, she says... They it also in- come... Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. She says, Ugh. it was incredible. And the blue one says, see what you've been missing? And she thinks something has shifted. And that this could be permanent if she wanted it. And she decides that one bad experience didn't have to taint her future. She could be more than the sum of other people's mistakes. And could... Gr- grow and learn and start anew and that she would microwave the rest of the pack tomorrow and that's where the book ends you're welcome but we never get tomorrow we never get to see the four 
Honestly, so, for being so our re- hang on, hang on. For being our resident rom com girl, that was very cynical there. At the are you okay? You okay, Crystal? You okay? That was no. That was, <laughs> Clearly, I'm tra- not okay. <laughs> that was very cynical, my love. It was very cynical. So she like, wanted to see the four freaking. Yeah, because you corrupted her. I really I know. did, though. I really did. <laughs> so can't in good conscience ask whose favorite character anybody was because i don't think there was any any least favorite characters here i, know, I, like I can't pink. fucking speak today characters <clears throat> i will say that Goodreads... i do like the color blue more than i like the color pink does that count no no i also <laughs> like the color blue more i will say that both goodreads <clears throat> and amazon have the exact same rating and it is a 3.8 so what yeah. are we giving it ladies i gave it a four out of five I Damn. think, yeah. So here's what I had said about that. Said, sorry, so, I was like, fucking really? My review like, title Shit. was okay with a <laughs> bunch of A's and Y's. I love you. Said, to be honest, I only read this because my friends made me. But if I'm <laughs> going to judge this fairly for what it is, which is a 21 page. That is true. She's got a point. Not even. But like, I had two problems within those 21 yeah. pages. So. I would have to say four out of five because for me, when I stopped reading it physically and just made my phone read it to me, like it seemed well written. The story didn't really stop anywhere. And it did take me out of my head. Like I was actually, I felt like I was actually with the CC character, like whatever. Like I, I was in that, I was in that space, you know, for what it was, I give it a four out of five. There you go. Now, is there a room for improvement? Always. <laughs> yeah. I'm I gave it... this three stars. I was actually going to also give it a three. It needed to include the tomorrow and <laughs> figure out what the fuck is going on with her backstory. <laughs> I feel like if we expanded it to like 40 pages, maybe we could have we could have had that. Let's or three, though. For... Honestly, take out her backstory and just give me the tomorrow. The, you know, was, that works. For what it was. Yes, yeah. it was cliched and whatever, but even if it was cliched, it was a little bit uplifting because sometimes as people, we have like that one terrible bad experience and we and just, we just and avoid we just something need to be for the rest with of our lives. So, you know, it makes you think, wow, what if like I've hated pickles my whole life? So how about a cucumber rating or, you know, what, a marshmallow rating since this is a peep? I gave it three out of 10. I would also say about that. Where are the scenes? Can we describe them better? That would no. be lovely. How about you, Ariel? Two. A two. So, Angie, Ariel, we have added a new feature since you've <gasps> last been here. Really? We're excited to bring to you our new feature that comes after cucumbers. Oh my god! Survivability. <gasps> so, or if you were the life. main, well, first, if you were the main character, a would you survive in this book? And B, if you would, how's your life going? Are we starting with the Smutty Peep novella or can we start with the next one? Because <laughs> I'm telling you right now about where Cecilia or Cece or whatever the fuck her name was. So I'll start. <clears throat> Quality of life, my vagina would be riddled Terrible. with the yeast infection. So yeah. my quality of life would be absolute garbage. Would I survive yeah, that would, this? That would suck. Who knows? Because it's two marshmallow Can pieces. you die of a yeast infection? I probably think you, you probably get can. get septic shock. You can. Yeah. My so, luck, I probably would get septic shock. Potentially, the survivability is not very high if we ignore the yeast infection. It don't get and treated. I don't go to the doctor very well. I'm not very good at that kind of thing. So I probably honestly would die. I'm going to say if I was, if I had to, like had to hit it below the belt, I would make them wrap it up. That's In true. cellophane. That's true. I would probably, yeah, make them do that first. Be like, I know that you've been in a package all this time, but I need you to put I it I need you to package. wrap it in that package. <laughs> if you intend to tap it, you better wrap it. Oh my God. So, Angie. Crystal. So, we knew that this was not going to be a very long ordeal. Indeed. Because it was 21 pages. Indubitably. So, Ariel and I decided to give you a little surprise. I like surprises. I need one after today. Well, you're going to need more because I don't think you're going to enjoy these surprises. Because Do you have our... your seat, you have your no. seatbelt on? You have your seatbelt on. Buckle the fuck up. 
buckled up. Ariel and I decided that we are not going to just bring you this one unhinged. Ariel and I each chose our own unhinged. We did not read each other's unhinged stories. I'm going to be hearing Ariel's for the first time, and she's going to be hearing mine for the first time, and you're going to be hearing a total of three stories today, which is the one we just did, and then mine and Ariel's. Yay! I I have props. Just give me one second. I made props. I did See, not. I came prepared, I but just... apparently so did she. <laughs> <laughs> we figured we'd give you an Easter treat. You love me. We do. I don't know if you're going to oh. love us after this one. Just well, know that I laughed hysterically. Well, so we picked them out together. So we do know what they are, but we did not read them. And I'm so excited. They're <laughs> very short novellas. I was going to say they were both under 100 pages. I'm pretty sure mine was like 50 pages or something. I like think that. mine was 70. But I yeah. actually think mine was really, really fucking short. I flew through it. Nice. Oh, yes, As go an first. additional Easter treat. I thought I would bring you another item that is often in an Easter basket. Yes. And today I bring you a teddy bear. I made this during my training that I had to go to on Saturday. It's not very good. I'm not an artist. But I made him out of clay during my training. Cute. Cute. So the book that I am bringing you today is called Snuggle by Sabrina Cross. It is a demon teddy bear romance. Ooh. Tell me more. Tell me more. Look, look, does he have horns? I don't know. It's a demon. So the first line in this book is, it is a truth universally acknowledged that men suck, like really suck, but not in a good suck my clit until I come way, but the terrible are completely useless for anything way. What a strong start. Land poetry. I was sold. It can only this, go up from here. It, it yep. really oh, and only... it, it there <laughs> were things that went up. So this woman, Jasmine, who I actually did not learn her name until 80% through the way through this book, but I'm not going to make you wait. So I'm going to tell you her name <laughs> is Jasmine now. Huh? Jasmine has a really shitty ex-husband. Like really shitty. He wants to impress his new girlfriend by having family time with their two kids and taking them to Florida for vacation over Thanksgiving. Now, this man has not been to any of his visitations with his kids in like three months, but all of a sudden now he wants his holiday that he never cares about because he wants to impress the girl. Giving Just Go With It by Adam Sandler. Yeah. So he plans on taking two girls under the age of 10 on a road trip to florida (laughs) he tried to tell this man he was a moron but no men he's a man so she's like "Hmm, good luck so we find out that her friend violet as well as two of her other friends were convinced by her friend violet to they were probably drunk but they were convinced to do a spell to find true love one night it's gonna only go bad (laughs) Practical magic. Okay. 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 So this happened a couple months back. And apparently, according to this spell, they had a year to find their true love. And what they didn't know, what they found out with the fine print of the first book, because this is the second book in the series, what they found out is that a demon would be assigned to them to help them find their true love. And that if they did not find their true love within that year, their soul would be sold to the devil. This took a turn I was not expecting with a teddy bear book. I was not either. All right. I rolled with it. So what she thought was a funny, drunken thing she did with her friends turned out to be legit. And now she's like concerned. She's like on the hook for her soul. Got it. Yeah. She's not seen this demon. She's kind of like, is it true for me? Is it not true for me? Like, We'll see. Hasn't shown up in the past couple months. Whatever. Her friend Clover was the last book. While she was dealing with her demon and kind of avoiding her demon, she crocheted her friend a teddy bear to house her demon. Jasmine kind of was like, yeah, sure. Crochet me a five-foot bear. 
Yeah, that'll take you long enough. She, you know, she figured. Yeah, she didn't take into consideration how fast her friend crochets. So now she has a five foot bear sitting in her office for the last couple months. Well, jokes on her because once the car leaves with her children, there's a voice from behind her. Good grief. I thought they'd never leave. It's the bear. Apparently this bitch has been waiting for months sitting immobile because he didn't want to scare the children. So I mean, okay. that's considerate. Good on a demon, him. Right. A demon with a soft side for children. Gotta love it. I mean, it is a bear, so. Right. So she's kind of like, yeah, no. I don't know I gotta how go we got work. here. She's like, ah, yeah, no, I gotta go to work. Now she works out of her home. So she just kind of hold, 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 her... hold, hold on a second. A demon bear talks to you and says, good, I've been waiting for them to leave. And you just decide, oh, I'm just going to go to work. You're not going to address any of she that. Is she's like, avoidance nope. to yeah, the she's extreme. Like, yeah. She's like, nope, not dealing with this. Not dealing with and this. I got to go to work. Defense, she did see her friend go through this process. So she is aware that it is a thing. That this kind of shit happens or can yeah. happen. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I'm also super avoidant too. So if some shit like that did happen to me. I would like, burn my fucking house down. I'd be like, <laughs> I just don't have the energy to deal with this right now. So we'll talk right. about this when I get over. Are you CC from the last book? I don't have the energy to deal with this right now. Yeah. Yeah, basically. <laughs> oh, I can't wait to get to mine. <laughs> Poor you guys. I feel so bad. Anyways, continue. I'm sorry. So, that's okay. So she works out of her home. She has a home office and that's where she works. So she kind of just closes the door and holds herself up in there. He ends up coming in there and is like, shouldn't you be worried about the deal? Aren't you worried about, you know, the whole devil thing? Like, hello, I have a job to do here. And she's kind of like, I'm not afraid of you. I'm five inches taller than you. See, that's some shit I would say. And Obviously, he's like, that would be me, like me looking at you, Ariel. Like, I'm not, and he goes, I am actually terrified this of form, you. maybe. And he's like, why did you choose this form anyways for him to come into? And she goes, mm -hmm. it's hard to be intimidated by a child's play thing. What Aww. a brat. I love it. Ariel's a story about you. So now every time, every time he like gives her shit, she just can laugh at him because it's coming from a teddy bear. Okay. So. Who wrote this book? Because where are the cameras? <laughs> where... <laughs> he kind of gets a little frustrated with her later on. He's like, I don't have time to babysit you. Like, this is my job. Like, what is your plan? What, what, do, you, what do you plan to do about this? And she's like, mm, you find somebody for me. Like, if you're so worried about finding me a mate, finding me the love of my life, you do it. Later on. on that evening, he's all, I found you a date. She's like, no. That was fast. She's like, I'm Seriously, having pizza. where are the cameras? She's like, I'm having pizza with a bath, watching TV and going to bed. That's great. Okay. Like, that's my plans for tonight. Mm. So he goes in and draws her the perfect bath, sets her Kindle by the bath, some candles, like sets this it This boy all is seducing her. her. Like, I'm sorry, you said, you said he was a demon? Yeah. Is he is Well, he no wonder incubus? nobody wants to go to heaven. God damn. Oh, just wait till you find out what kind of demon. I was just so, gonna say, is he an incubus? So then after she gets out of the bath, he comes in, which she's all like, dude, could you like not? No. And he's like, you can't avoid men forever. And she's like, hmm, just until I don't hate them on principle. Apparently the ex Ariel, was, like was this book a you? real narcissistic prick and a half. Oh, okay. And so... she's like, she's like, it took me so long to get his voice out of my head. I don't need to get someone else's. Jesus. Like, that's not how oh, You went real deep with this, huh? You're like, you know what? That other book did give me enough backstory here. I got to get I didn't know one. what I was getting. I didn't know what I, I was know. getting into, to be honest with you. So... <laughs> And she's all like, I'm going to bed. She's like, you can leave now. He's like, I'm good. I don't sleep. And she's like, you're not going to creepily watch me sleep. And he's probably like, bet. <laughs> she's like, I need a good orgasm and sleep. Now get out. He's like, I could help you with that. Apparently, he's a lust demon. 
And he doesn't even have to touch her. And she's like, prove it. Bitch is playing with fire. So he does. Heat floods her clit. And it feels like everything else said a dirty word. (gasps) Everything is being flayed open. All of a sudden, she's being impaled by an invisible phallus. And it is big and stretching her wide. Okay. That one from zero to 100. Oh, wait, because it is doing things for her, but it is still not enough. So here comes another one up her ass. And she's just getting them both going. And they're going in and out and in and out and in and out. And then all of a sudden, pressure slams to her clit. And you win. She's done for. You get an orgasm and you get an (laughs) orgasm. Everybody gets an orgasm. You're welcome. Oh, God. (laughs) So the next day. She's working in her office, and he brings her lunch while she's working. The bear. The teddy bear. He's trying his hardest to balance his, like, sheet tray with stuff on it because, I mean, he's- Picturing Ted. Teddy oh, bear. my God. I was just going to say that. <laughs> he's five feet tall, though. And okay. he's coming, bumbling into the office. She's so, like, struck by this because nobody does things for her. Of course. Kind of nice and sweet. The bare minimum. He's all like, I found you a date. You can't skip this one. And so her friends, Violet and Fern, are at the door. They're going with her. Speed dating. So, cool. Sounds like my nightmare. Yeah, well, it doesn't take her long before she's stomping angrily back in through the door. Apparently, it was a gay and lesbian speed dating (laughs) event. Mm, Poor baby. Poor straight baby. And she starts punching him in his little teddy bear stomach. She punches him three times and... He's all like, now you get three. She's like, you're going to hit me? He's like, (laughs) no. Now you get three orgasms. Right? Like, that escalated quickly. (laughs) I wish I got rewarded for being a brat. No. He's like, I'm going to pin you to the bed and push you over to the edge. I'm going to do it over and over again. I'm going to work you over until you can't remember anything but my name. Okay. But what's his name? Oh, sorry, Finn or X. And she's all kind of like, can I call you Finn? He's like, no. And so she does it on principle. I'm sorry, I forgot yeah. to mention that part. No, I, I would do that too. Also, I'm picturing his demon form as Finnick or Dare from now on. So me happy. they get kind of like cuddly and she grinds on his teddy bear arm to get off for number one. And then he uses his magic to give her an invisible dick, a giant one, for two. And then she's all like, I can't, I can't no more. And he's all like, it wouldn't be punishment if it was all fun and games now, would it? (laughs) And ramps it up and gives her number three. Love that. This was the perfect book for you. So then the next day, it's Thanksgiving. And it's kind of a lonely Thanksgiving because the girls are gone. And it's kind of weird. And she's kind of lonely. So she's just reading and chilling in bed all morning. She would have ordered, like, she's not going to cook all, you know, for her. I mean, does the teddy bear eat, you know? And she would have ordered in so she wouldn't have had to cook, but she would have had to pre-plan that way in advance. And her stupid ex gave her, like, a day's notice. So that's not a thing. So she heads downstairs to a house that is fully clean. And all the chores are done. And Finn is saying that she has just enough time to shower before dinner. Okay, this is this is as much like spicy smut as it is emotional smut. I love this for us. This man makes her Thanksgiving dinner and hold on puts on as much as you can. So I'm gonna ruin it. And puts on a Christmas movie and snuggles her on the couch. Yeah. So she goes Black Friday shopping with her friend. And when she comes home, she finds Finn in her room. And he's in there with a fucking truckload of toys. And I don't mean children's toys. Of course not. Yeah. I'm talking any kind of toy you can imagine, including all the lube you could ever need. In fact, she's all kind of like, how could anyone possibly need all of this lube ever? And he's all kind of like, I'm limited in this form, but I like to please you. Let me please you. So he gets out this vibrating wand and he's trying to like maneuver it with his 
teddy bear paws Aww. and like putting it on her. But like, it's going okay until he's just like, ride me. And then you see him, he's got this strap on, on this teddy bear body with this giant wide ass dildo on it. And she's like, I don't think it's going to fit, but old baby, does he make it? What all the lube was for. I was just yep. going to say. She pulled, she pulled out some lube to make it go. He even like manages to grab the wand again with his little hands and like shoop, as she's riding him. Yeah, they're having some fun times. So then they clean up all the toys and everything. And he heads downstairs to get her some food, which she didn't know, but he heads downstairs to get her some food. When all of a sudden her phone rings and it's her oldest daughter really upset. Apparently her dad's just been like a complete jerk this whole trip. It's awful. She even like recorded the way that he was like screaming at them and treating them. And of course, all the videos that she records on her phone automatically uploads to the cloud. So the mom has access to it. So the mom is like, mm, no. And she makes arrangements for them to come home early. She like, she's scared about putting them alone on a plane, but she says it's better than them being with him anymore right now. Mm -hmm. And tells him basically like, no. I have this video. We'll go to court if I need to. Right. You are going to put them on this plane. I'm going to be on the other end of this. This is done. So when Finn finally comes up with some food, she's kind of like, I, I need you to leave. My kids are coming home. And he's kind of like, I can't. Like, um, I'm here for a job. I can't just go away. I'm here with you until you find your mate. I can't help you if I'm living somewhere else. I can't go back to where I came from until I'm successful. And she's kind of like, they can't know about you. And I can't stand knowing that you're there completely aware and unable to move again. Like rock in a hard place, right? Mm -hmm. So she's just too scatterbrained right now to think. She just has to focus on the kids right now. So she goes to the airport to get the kids. The kids never made it onto the plane. She's pissed. She gets home, breathing heavy. The dad's car is in her driveway. Apparently, the girlfriend wanted to come back early anyways. So it's safer to all come back together, isn't it? Than to send the kids flying alone. Don't you think that's more responsible? No. And... She's like, it didn't look safer from the video I saw. He didn't like that. So he grabs her by the arms and starts pushing her back by the porch really angrily. When all of a sudden, poof, he's pulled away from her. And he, there's all of a sudden this towering man there kind of holding on to him. You will not touch her again. And it's Finn's voice. Get the girls. And she's like, don't kill him. She gets the girls and head inside. So she gets the girls to bed and then she heads downstairs to see Finn. And she's like, how? So she learned in the other book. Well, if I had read the other book first, but she learned from her friend that the demons do have a human form and a demonic form. So this must now be Finn's human form. And she's just kind of like, how? How did you get it? And he's just kind of like, you finally caught up and knew that you were perfect for me. You caught up to where I have been this whole time. And then she gets giant perfect dick. I love that for her. And then we have an epilogue where yeah. she's basically like, you can't stay here. And he's like, I'm not going anywhere. And they settle on, she has this loft in her barn. And it's like a loft apartment. And she's kind of like, well, what do I tell the girls? Well, there's a friend staying there to help do some work around the house. Like you could use someone helping you. And she's kind of like, I can't wait. I hope I get to see his demon form. And that's how we end this book. We don't get to see him demon form. I know. That's why I rated this book three and a half stars. Okay. That's cute. That was really cute. What was your cucumber rating? Oh, I didn't think about that because I wasn't doing it as a group. Yeah, we Got were. I, I didn't do any ratings on mine. Only because I only just rated it because I read it. Yeah. They were just. They're yeah, Angie surprises. And now to ruin that moment. Oh, oh, that's sad. Ariel, you already knew what I read. I can't remember. Do what I remember? So today. I remember us discussing many things. Did you end up with the 
G1 or the S1? The G1. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh. oh, no. <laughs> Okay, Angie. I am so sorry in advance. We went through so many options. I picked it to be an asshole. An asshole. (laughs) Contradictory, but sure. You'll understand it as soon as I read you the title. Today, I am bringing to you Bagged by the Groceries by Fanny Tucker. Okay. I'm so (laughs) I am so sorry for this one. Ariel, did you? I thought this was (laughs) good. Ariel, did you read the description of yours or no? I did not. Okay. I'm, I'm, I just want to make sure. Going in. Going in blind. All right. So if I laugh throughout this, I am so sorry because where I thought this was going was not where it went. You're oh. welcome. So the now book- I'm intrigued. No, no eating the booty like groceries. Okay. Got it. Maybe this, this book is wild. The only concern I had was a little part of the book felt a wee bit racist. And it's in a grocery because, shopping one? It's only because of how a specific lady was portrayed. So the one line that I will say from the lady is exactly how it is written in the book, but I'm not going to describe anymore. So just be aware of that one. This hmm. book takes place in New Orleans. Okay. And it starts with our main character, Ashley. And she is currently leaving the supermarket, pushing her shopping cart, you know. She just went grocery shopping and she gets a text from her husband that he is working late and he's going to get dinner at the bar and to not wait up. He is a lawyer. So he is meeting with his like partners from the law firm and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. She's a little bit sad. His lawyer friends. His lawyer friends. She's a little bit sad because she had just gotten all the ingredients for his favorite meal. And now she's. Which is what? Don't worry. I don't know what the meal is, actually, because me, well, I know I, I have literally no idea what the meal is. Just, oh. just you wait, because I have so many questions. And she's, you know, she's in another world. She accidentally runs into this old lady and she's apologizing and she feels super bad because she just fucking ran into this lady with her shopping cart. And this Nothing. lady just glares at her and is like, okay, well, you know, if you give me a little something for dinner. All will be forgiven. Ash is like, no, I don't have anything. What? The lady's an Maybe. unhoused human. And she's like, I don't have anything for you. You know, all the things that I have are I'm cooking dinner for my husband. The lady does not like this. And she just goes, you want them groceries? That's fine. You're going to get them groceries. Just know that that sentence is cleaned up from what it actually says. Because there is a lot of, it's Louisiana. Just this lady is a voodoo lady. That's I all figured. I got for you. So when you, you read said it, unhoused lady, I immediately that's where my head went. I was so like, so just Louisiana. know that's the only that's the only portion of the book that I was like, ooh, that feels a little uh, reading. A little icky. Yeah, it was a weird. Lovely. Yeah. Anyways, so you want them groceries? That's fine. You're gonna get them groceries. The lady fucking freaks her out because <laughs> I mean, you know. So Basically she heads home. Like, hmm, okay, you're yeah. gonna get those groceries. Okay. Yeah. So she heads home. And she starts, you know, pulling all her stuff out of the bags to put away and grabs a glass of wine and everything is still out on the counter. So like all of her shit's out in the kitchen and, you know, it starts storming outside and, you know, she's like, oh, she's sad because, you know, her husband's not home. So she just kind of goes out onto her little balcony area and just kind of looks across Why the be si- sad? I don't you know. Can be glad. Just relax. Oh, wait a second. Okay. So. <laughs> So she's just looking across, like, over the cities. They're located in the Garden District of New Orleans, which I know what that looks like. So, like, they're, she's kind of, like, looking over over in this, over the city a little bit. She thinks about how her husband was a junior partner at a law firm, and she's a housewife, and she has dreamed of this life. But Blake, who is her husband, works really, really long hours, and she's left home alone, fucking bored. So, while it seems like, you know, a life you would want, in reality, it's fucking boring. So she goes back into the house and she just hears a clatter in the kitchen. Oh, what the fuck Ooh, is yeah. going on? Like, did someone break into my house? And she's thinking that she has to be fucking imagining things because that old lady at the grocery store rattled the shit out of her. She goes out into the kitchen and like the bags of groceries are like mostly empty now. And the yogurt container is on the floor and basically empty at this point too and all of the produce meat and bread and all that shit fucking gone like just gone so uh uh-oh she's panicking 
So she grabs oh. the, she grabs the biggest knife from her butcher block because duh, I would too. If duh. I think someone's in my fucking house, I'm grabbing a goddamn knife. And she goes across the kitchen and she goes, oh, fuck, you know what? I'm going to go into the bedroom because I know that my husband keeps a gun in there. And that seems like a better option. So she goes in there. And thankfully, no one's in the bedroom because she is still like freaking out thinking someone's in her goddamn house. And after she rips open the drawer in the bedroom and grabs the gun out, she like turns around and sees a shadow in the door, in like the doorway. And... So she yells at him and she tells him to fucking get back. And she's like aiming the gun at him and like pulls the hammer back on the gun. Like she's going to shoot this motherfucker because duh. And the man ends up stepping forward. It's not a man. It's the groceries. They have all somehow shaped into a human form. Don't worry. It gets fucking weirder. It is a six foot tall man. Don't worry. I have more questions. She thinks she's gone fucking crazy because, yeah. So (laughs) this way, it only gets weirder from here. So I just. Hold on. I got you. Don't worry. If you're picturing what this looks like, I have a description for you. So I got you. So the sack of flour is the abdomen. The chest and shoulders are packages of ground beef. The bulging biceps are eggplants. His forearms are ears of corn with the husks still on. The hands are oranges and each knuckle has a baby carrot. I think they're just carrot fingers at this point. The iceberg lettuce is the head. The iceberg lettuce is the head. We do learn later on that his tongue is a piece of ham. And he's got (laughs) olives for eyes. And his legs are two thick loaves of bread. And he's got a long cucumber, obviously as a dick, and a pair of smooth, ripe nectarines for his balls. Also, this man is supposed to be six feet tall. How many fucking groceries did this lady get? DNF. Nope, we're going to keep going. Okay. As gross as this is going to sound, hear me out. At least... PH wise, cucumber is way sense, better than marshmallow. Right? I do have an issue about the nectarine thing, and I will explain it in a little bit. Don't worry. I, of course, it's citrus. That's not the problem I have. So this Should thing be. goes towards her, and she's like, Who are you? And it replies, Zaka. So cool, it talks. <laughs> Zaka the groceries. This is the moment Zaka that groceries. She, this is the moment that she knew the old lady did some z- voodoo on her. So but she asks what, what it wants from her. I'm so sorry, guys. The rest of this is just gonna get crazy. She asks what it wants from her, and it says to plant my seed. Rise, woman. Give me what is mine. Don't worry, because still gets DNF weird. twice. No, it keeps getting weirder. <laughs> so. I'm still in it. I'm still in it. So she stands and it pulls her in. Surprisingly, he's warm and not as cold as grocery should be. He's just nice and warm. The grocery just. And so it starts to undress her and it touches her boobs with his like orange hands. Gross. (laughs) And she starts moaning because apparently this is turning her on and she starts touching herself and slides her hand down and yeah, and she's soaking wet and he starts to (laughs) rub her in the <clears throat> quote slow way that corn stalks sway in a gentle summer wind the wording in this book fucking weird she can't okay. stand it so she can't stand it anymore and she pulls up her skirt and takes her underwear off and then he starts to finger fuck her with his carrot fingers Gross. and then she comes and then he licks his fingers and says mm, fertile soil for my seed Okay, well, I'm I'm right next to the door about to walk out, but I'm still in it. I'm still oh, in I it. I can't wait. I can't wait for the line that I, yeah. So he pushes her down to her knees and she starts to blow his cucumber dick. And he asks her to suckle his fruit. And now apparently his balls are plums because he re- oh. they're plums now. That's my complaint. Continuity they went, at her. How'd they go from nectarines to plums? Those are two different fruits. But whatever. And as she's as she is doing this, all she can think about is the fact that she is so glad when she was at the grocery store. Maybe they were nectarines, but then finger fucking her engorged them and had him like kind of like a blue ball kind of situation. And now they've turned into plums. Literally. Wouldn't it be funnier if it was large blueberries? Yeah. 
I don't know. None of this makes sense. I I'm I would done. never have gotten to oh, this part. Oh, I know. I but if we're gonna by now. if we're gonna if we're gonna go into nonsensical territory, at least make it funny. That's the point. Right. You're welcome. So I know that's why I said I'm gonna ruin all the niceness of the last book to this book. So all she's thinking in her it's head is, "Oh my god, oh my god, I am so glad." That instead of the gigantic fucking zucchinis that I was planning on getting, that I got these cucumbers instead. The fuck? Oh, okay. Because she's currently sucking I, his. Yep, yes. Yep, so she's yep. glad with the gigantic fucking zucchini that she went with the still gigantic cucumber. Still big, less. But not as big. Bulbousy, I think, because zucchini has. Anyways, considering this thing was gonna fucking bang. So he brings her to her feet, undresses her fully. And then puts her on the bed. And then, then he starts to fuck her. And then this is the part that I burst out laughing. So you're welcome. And then she starts to yell out, come on, baby. Give me them groceries. Give me them fucking groceries. No. No. I lost my shit. No. And then he did. And then he comes. And as he comes, she realizes that his cum is the yogurt. From the container that was empty earlier. And when he's done, he just says, Yuck. yep, he just says Ew. that she's ready now. And the next man's seed will find purchase. And the creature starts to fall apart. Honey, so then, what's for dinner tonight? Her husband comes home. And he goes into the bedroom and he goes, what the fuck? Because the whole room is a mess. There are flower footprints fucking everywhere. There's yogurt on the mattress. It's just wild. And then... How do you explain that to your husband? I cheated on you with your dinner. Then Blake well, just looks at her and he goes, there's a glow to your skin. Have you always been this beautiful? And then he Lord. says that he needs to make love to her. And then they oh. did. And then she knew she what would come next. What the meaning of bearing his child would mean and that their lives would never be the same. And that's the end of the book. And that was bagged by groceries. Oh my good lord. What did you rate this book? I haven't given it, it yet. I'm going to give it a one and a half. I need to give it like a 2.5 for creativity purposes. I'm going to give it a one and a half and I'm being <laughs> generous. Just because you had to sit through this. Listen, as soon as she was like yelling, give me the fucking girl. I lost my <laughs> fucking shit i'm sitting here all right i'll give it a two it made, me laugh out loud. it made me laugh out loud i'll give it a two so the whole thing was so ridiculous that i was just sitting here laughing because i was like carrot fingers this dude Ew. has carrot fingers. like it was a wild experience of a ride but the, i'm like how many groceries did she fucking buy that this six foot tall man can just form with all of these groceries also it only said that he had the loaves of bread for legs how many fucking loaves of bread are we doing for the like how many loaves of bread did you buy how much meat did you buy also that had the, the, lettuce, the logic tiny. was not in this no there was none the logic was let's just have her get fucked by groceries and then that because he came in her now she can get pregnant with her husband i don't well know. i don't know how to follow that <laughs> So I'm just going to say, maybe you don't want to read that, but make sure that you do keep reading what you like. Make sure that you keep reading. And keep it smutty. In the corner. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe. we broke Angie. 